Donald Trump giving the Kremlin two victories today. First, dropping sanctions on the business interests of a Russian oligarch who's close to Putin and Paul Manafort. You may remember the name Oleg Deripaska. He's the Putin crony who Manafort offered private briefings to during the 2016 campaign. Tonight, Donald Trump's Treasury Department, get this, lifting sanctions that were explicitly imposed earlier this year in that area. So that looks like a win. Then second, Trump defying his own military, deciding to remove all U.S. troops from Syria. Now, Pentagon officials, you may recall, had argued against this because it cedes power to guess who? Vladimir Putin. Trump doing it anyway, claiming the troops aren't needed because he says ISIS has basically been defeated. Now, these two moves are context for news in the Russia collusion probe. Donald Trump's fingerprints all over this Moscow deal. We now know he signed this letter of intent to try to build there and get money up front. Donald Trump's signature. You can see it right here. Now, this was obtained, I want to tell you, by the news outlet CNN, and we have not yet tonight independently verified it, but it is dated October 28th, 2015. That's four months after Donald Trump announced he was running for president. And just below, you can see the signature of the owner of the Russian firm that Trump was partnering with. The agreement calling for a, quote, first-class luxury mixed-use project to be known as Trump Moscow, laying out a plan for 250 first-class luxury condominiums, 15 floors for luxury hotel, and a luxury spa fitness center, promising also Trump a $4 million upfront free. As I mentioned, that would be money Trump would get basically linked to Putin before any of the construction would even begin. Don Jr. telling Congress his father had signed that letter of intent, but on Sunday, Get this defense, Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani saying there was a letter of intent to go forward, but no one signed it. Now Giuliani says, I don't think I said no one signed it. And he calls the letter BS anyway, which means very little, and says either way, it's all new context for what Trump was publicly saying in 2015 about Putin. But I will tell you that I think in terms of leadership, he's getting an A and our president is not doing so okay. well. They did not look good together. I think that we are very different. I think that I would, at the same time, get along very well with him. But I think that I would probably get along with him very well. Get along indeed. I have an all-star panel here to react in a moment, but we begin with California Congressman Eric Swalwell, who serves on both the Intelligence and Judiciary Committees. Uh, what does it tell you that the intent letter is signed and now public, and Rudy Giuliani is still confused about that? Uh, good evening, Ari. We see uh, the best evidence to date of a deep, deep interest that Donald Trump had to do business with the Russians while he was a presidential uh, candidate. He was so eager to make this project happen. Uh, his team uh, was floating the idea essentially of a $50 million bribe to Vladimir Putin so he could have his own suite uh, in Manhattan. But Ari, uh, as you'll start to see when the transcripts from our Intelligence Committee uh, interviews come out, uh, we were very concerned that Donald Trump was mixing a business and a political campaign and that this interest ran deep into not just the primaries uh, but the general election season as a foreign adversary uh, was attacking us. That's what's so offensive about it. You know, Robert Mueller will decide whether, you know, it was conspiracy as a crime, uh, but I think it was certainly betrayal. Betrayal, a strong word. Why do you think Donald Trump, who had business uh, admittedly in other parts of the world, didn't just say when he was bragging about money making in 2016, yeah, I'm working on deals in a lot of places, including Russia, but if I win, I'll deal with it. I mean, what would have been wrong with that? And does that itself look incriminating that he couldn't say that? I think it, it is incriminating, and he uh, and his family and his political team and his administration, every time they've been confronted about uh, contacts with the Russians, uh, they have denied it or lied. Uh, and I think it, that's this consciousness uh, of guilt, Ari. Again, this country, and I've had a, this challenge uh, with the next generation of Americans who didn't grow up uh, in the Cold War, they are not our friends, and not just for the Cold War tactics, uh, but because of what they have done in Syria, because of what they did in Crimea, because of what they they do uh, hmm. in Afghanistan to help uh, the Taliban. So we have to make it clear they're not our friends. But Donald Trump, uh, he knew they're not our friends, and he knew that he shouldn't have been as close as he was. Well, and you're putting your finger on it. Maybe they were his friends personally or for business reasons, but not the U.S. public interest reasons. I mean, that's the whole conflict we're talking about. While I have you, Congressman, I got to ask you about the big mystery 
This is something that may have started with legal nerds, but there's this new clue in the mystery subpoena that I think everyone's interested in. Yeah. You have this act outside the territory of the U.S. in connection with a commercial activity of a foreign state. Uh, I'm reading the key language, which is the only clue we have in something that many people say could be Mueller, uh, but that there was progress on as far as the feds are concerned. They got to move forward on this subpoena for country A. We were reporting this last night. Rachel Maddow's been all over it. A lot of folks have talked about it. I suspect you have heard about it or talked to people about it. Your view of what this means, uh, whether it's a good thing that the U.S. is now closer to getting evidence from uh, country A's state-owned something, yeah. state-owned corporation, what can you tell yes. us? Uh, a big win for the Mueller team, and it just shows the complexity of this investigation. Uh, and we saw it as we interviewed witnesses, uh, which was that you have uh, dozens of foreign witnesses, uh, dozens of foreign companies uh, involved, and thousands of communication logs and transactions. Now, I would suspect uh, this could indicate that Bob Mueller has opened up a line of investigation that would look at finances, because mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking uh, that a banking institution is probably uh, likely here. You've but said I, I Mueller twice. Do you have you personally? confirmed that this is a Mueller no. subpoena? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going off of the press reporting and but the you hounding but you and believe the following this, the vehicles. You believe this to be yeah. Mueller? Well, it, it, by every the circumstantial evidence we have, it, it looks like it. But uh, I also just in from the evidence we reviewed, there are you know banks overseas uh, that the Trump team has used uh, that we would have liked to have seen. So my hope is that Bob Mueller uh, has, in his mandate, pursued that too. And before I let you go, I got to give you one more a couple of doors, door number one or two. Do you think this is China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, or something else? Or Germany, right? I mean, it could be or Deutsche, uh, Deutsche Bank. Bank. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think it could be any of those. But I, I think uh, my gut is a former prosecutor tells me uh, this is banking related. Banking. Uh, fascinating. And I appreciate you uh, clarifying. You're not 100 percent certain, but you think it's a bank and you think it's Mueller. Uh, Congressman Swalwell, we appreciate your time tonight. Thanks. All right. My pleasure. I want to bring in Dan Goldman, a former federal prosecutor from the Southern District of New York, which has been pretty busy. Caroline Polisi, a defense attorney who represents guilty Trump aide George Papadopoulos and has dealt directly with the Mueller probe. And Christina Greer, political science professor at Fordham University. Uh, thanks to all of you. Let me start with you, Dan, and what we're seeing there. The congressman sounds pretty strong, pretty clear that he thinks that's another Mueller piece of the puzzle moving forward. We've got the fallout from Flynn. And at this very moment, the news I report about uh, the Trump administration seemed to buddy up to Russia tonight. It's, it's another data point as we move closer and closer and further along in this Mueller probe. It's not at all surprising that Robert Mueller is stretching the bounds of grand jury subpoenas. Now, a foreign corporation owned by a foreign state would be outside of the ambit of a grand jury subpoena. But if they do business in the United States, they often have subsidiaries and you can get to them through that. So it does sound like from press reports it is a Bob Mueller grand jury subpoena right um and, and this obviously anonymous corporation basically lost they were making what uh, what is commonly known as the ludicrous argument and i don't mean the word i mean the rapper you know he said stay out my business stay out my business <laughs> stay the <laughs> blank out of my business rhyming business with itself three times christina which you have to be a good poet to do that that was their argument and and this is a, a, a judges here in the u.s saying no we're going to make you however they can turn this stuff over to whomever it is swalwell says turn it over to Mueller." right and it's also interesting i, I mean how many co how many corporations are owned by the state not right? many. Not that many. I mean, they're not that many state-owned corporations. Obviously, Saudi Arabia, you pointed out, owns a lot of corporations. Russia seems to have state-owned corporations. China does seem to have. So you, you, we are narrowing in on it. On the flip side, I wouldn't make too much of a big deal of this. Obviously, it's something that Robert Mueller wants, and he's not going to just let them get away with it. Mm -hmm. But let's not lose the forest of the trees here, because this could be somewhat of a sideshow that we're intrigued about. But what we're starting to see in this probe is a, a lot of dots, a lot of data point mm -hmm. around 
sanctions relief. That appears to be what the motivator was. You have Michael Cohen lying to Congress. You're going to talk later tonight about why Michael Flynn lied about conversations that he would have obviously known that the FBI overheard, also related to sanctions. What is it that is motivating Trump? And I think that really is what Robert Mueller is starting to press the gas on, and it's starting to come out bit by bit. This could make your client and some other people who are caught up in this look better. Uh, if they are basically unwitting, relatively uninformed people who were asked to meetings, asked to this or that, meanwhile there was something much bigger to Dan's theory of the case going on, something international, state-backed, and financial. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. I, I don't think anybody would dispute that there's um, a lot of smoke here. And I think the, the news coming out today about whether or not, you know, the, the letter was signed, Giuliani saying that it wasn't and now that it was, I don't think that in and of itself is, is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. I think that in a vacuum, that deal could definitely be very legal and very cool. Um, however, mm, you know, very cool. <laughs> very cool. But um, however, obviously, in the larger context, the issue is, you know, compromise. What does the Russian government know about the private dealings of Trump and his associates? Do they and, know that Cohen lied to the to Congress about it? Well, here's the yeah. link in what you're saying. If it was very legal and very cool, why wouldn't you be talking about it back in the day? It, it, That's what people do about a lot of things that are very legal and very cool. No, exactly. Say you have an above ground pool. Right. Not illegal. Very cool. Very cool. And you say, hey, I got a new above ground pool. But that's not what they did. No, I agree. They with you. That's were, why the, the talking the guy point who is wrong. Brags, right? The guy who brags about his deals and his money and his prowess isn't bragging about one thing that, by the way, did look like on the money, maybe not on the crime, if there was a crime, but on the money, yeah, if you can, if you can strike a deal where you get four million up front before you do right. anything, cool, maybe you are good at business. Right. But if you're getting four million up front, not for business, but for something else. Yeah, and to Dan's point, and when you, when you look at it in, in a legal context, in a conspiracy, you start seeing more of a quid pro quo here. So, so th that's really the issue in terms you of You see evidence deal. of a quid well, pro quo. I'm not saying I see evidence. I'm saying that, you know, that's, that's where the legal theory would go in terms of it's, if Mueller's trying to charge a conspiracy, if he's trying to, you know, whatever he's trying to charge, there's, there's a give and a take. And, and I think that would provide some evidence. Let's talk about spa day. Okay, because this deal <laughs> included specifically at this early stage, they didn't build the tower, um, but this is what we're getting because, as I mentioned, uh, it has now leaked a signed intent letter, and it says the Russian developer must, quote, brand a portion of the spa and fitness facilities of Moscow Tower there, quote, the spa by Ivanka Trump. Right. So here's the thing. This is an administration that is, is filled with, I think, just a series of people who are engaging in criminal enterprises before they got to 1600 Pennsylvania. And now, like, this is the grift that's gone too far because... You're saying this is a thug life administration in your view. I mean, anyone who's lived in New York knows that this is how Donald Trump has always done business. The fact that we have never seen his taxes is something that I still think is of great import. We don't know who he's been getting his money from for years because we know that American-backed banks have long since deal... De they've stopped dealing with him for quite some time because he faults on loans. He inflates certain things, and, you know, he's a shoddy businessman, and he, he makes a shoddy product. So this is of great concern to me because the types of great people that he seems to attract don't seem to mind to either lean on the line of legality or straight over cross it. And so if, as you said, Donald Trump loves to brag about what he has and how big it is and this, this building and this country, why did you forget to say this? We can go back to Jared, right? Jared had to fill out that form how many times? Because he just kept forgetting the millions and do uh, millions of dollars in various business entities that he just forgot to put on the form. So there's a certain level of disrespect that this entire family has for the political process and for norms and mm -hmm. democracy. Mm -hmm. And I blame the Republican Party for not keeping their foot on the gas or putting their foot on the gas to say, actually, we cannot acquiesce. We have a separation of powers for a reason. And just because Donald Trump is the executive, just because he's flouting his, um, his power in a way that we've never seen before, that is actually not okay. And if you are the legislative branch, it is up to you to right. ask some serious questions as to where you got your money. Keep in mind that President met with Putin, what, twice now, with no one else in the room, and we right. have no idea what those so, conversations And we see are. that as a repeating habit. When you look at the Flynn piece of this, and now he's saying, okay, give me more time to cooperate, he didn't do as well as, as your client, George Papadopoulos, there in court. Uh, was that bad lawyering by Flynn's team? 
Uh, you know, I, I do feel for for the defense attorneys there because, look, it's always a fine line at sentencing. Do you when feel you're, for them because they did a bad job? Um, well, not not necessarily. I think I think they, they saw the judge's history here and they were trying to appeal to maybe, um, you know, th there's been reporting that he is really critical of the FBI investigative techniques at times. I, I agree it really fell flat. But They look, walked in right, with a get-out-of-jail-free card. But, but, they walked in with Bob Mueller, who's not a softie, saying leniency no time, and they turned that into the spectacle we saw Absolutely. last night. Absolutely, but, but this is just as frustrating to the special counsel's prosecutors as it is to the defense attorneys, to be clear. Going hard on Flynn at this stage um, undermines this, what the special counsel's office is trying to do. The, Flynn was their golden boy. Flynn was the guy that sure. did everything right. He met with them 19 times. Sure. He gave them information. They have two well, more indictments now. When you dealt with now. Mueller's team, were you clear in what they wanted as you well, went I'm, forward? I'm not going to talk about how, when, I, when I met with Mueller's well, team. I'm not but asking I'm saying, you for it, confidential matters. I'm saying, were, were you clear about the direction they wanted to go? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, Dan, Flynn's lawyers knew what they got, and they knew where Mueller's folks wanted to go, and they still folded in a little, you know, Fox News conspiracy theory in their final argument before the judge that blew up in their face. It did blow up in their face, but I don't actually think that's what made it go sideways yesterday. I think what Caroline was saying is mm -hmm. uh, take it a little step further. I think what the judge was really upset about was not the argument which was misguided, mistaken, and improper, and I think that the judge correctly fixed it, essentially. But I think what he was really upset about is that Flynn is getting this sweetheart deal. And sure. he doesn't understand why Bob Mueller gave him such a sweetheart deal if he was, if his conduct was so much worse than what he pled guilty to. So you, you, you think it would be a get out of jail free card because he's going in there with extensive right, cooperation, yep. zero to six month guidelines, and a recommendation of no jail from Bob Mueller. But the judge is thinking to himself, well, wait a minute, why is it? It's only zero to six because you didn't make him plead guilty to all of his conduct. Which is different. Which is different than what typically what your old office well, uh, would do. We they would they never make have you done charge that. to the. They would make you plead to the highest crime that they can that they can right. charge you with. And I think the the charge bargaining that Mueller's team is engaging in is is shocking to some judges. Um, and I think it didn't sit. It's, right. It didn't sit and I well. think I think you both have laid that out really well with some of the the creative differences we're talking about. Uh, two lawyers. And a boss. This could be a recurring, <laughs> could be a recurring segment. I'll work for Chrissy anytime. <laughs> uh, Dan, Caroline, and Christina, my thanks to you. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.